Yes, this is very unethical. This is the putting on my lipstick, my puppy thing lipstick, $27 from 2000 probably. And, uh, you know, trying to buy up all the lipstick or makeup that I felt I'd need in the wilderness. And come to find out, you can't forget. If you could prepare for the wilderness, it wouldn't be called a wilderness. The wilderness is all about not knowing. I'm trying to get rid of that glare. The wilderness is all about not knowing what's going to happen. Not knowing what you're going to do. Hoping for the best. Try not to lose your mind. You can't prepare for the world. The Lord said you can't. You can't, you can't prepare for trouble. But, honestly, I haven't worn it. I haven't worn my lipstick since I was my coffee pot. And I have a I have a lipstick brush. It doesn't travel well. I mean, you can't use that. And then, um, I'm gonna do something. I'm sure. There's something wrong with it, medically and scientifically. But the ends, I'm just going to use the matchstick instead. Thank you. I mean, it's not going to set my lips on fire, even though I'm using the head of it. Even though in my mind, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, I could set my lips. <laughs> I wonder if I could strike a match on my lips. <laughs> the lips, the match would like, I'd be like, I'd be like, even, even now, even though I know it's ridiculous. Oh my god, I hope I don't set my lips. <laughs> this lipstick seems to have been This is my coffee cup. Coffee cup. Is it still have, it's not called poppy. Well bred. Well bred. Well bred. By Sabian Makeup. By my friend, Vanessa. She was a good, she's a good person. She's still with us. If she knew I was going through this or whatever, she'd be gifting me stuff. But. I think the people that the Lord has made sure that I'm not talking to. Oh, two things. I think that there are people who would not understand what I was going through. They wouldn't understand why I would stop working, not make a salary, walk on and, tr and trust the Lord to provide for me. And even as I'm seeing him provide for me, I think these are people who would say, well, um, no, it's not God providing for you. It's the food stamp. It's the family. It's your girlfriend. So I think that they're this kind of person that would not understand me. And hence, the Lord is not letting me be close to them. And then I think there are other people that doesn't be close to me. And those are people who would understand me. I'm close. I'm, he's, he's left me with Claudia. That's the only girlfriend I have right now that I that I really do talk to often. And it's not because the others wouldn't understand. Oh, me and Stanis and Peggy and everybody. But I just can see them. I can just see them and hear them saying intermittently, as I have had 
bouts of things in my wilderness experience. I uh, okay, well, why don't you go and tell stories at Tim Hofa? Well, we're gonna do something at the um, so it's a restaurant. You come in and I'll give you and I would get $50. What would I do for you? I'd buy some cigars and a couple of yarn balls so that I could crochet something else. Maybe a sweater, another sweater, another sweater. You know, so he's made sure I'm not around people who would either agree with me that, yeah, we see that God is providing for you. We see that you're not supposed to work. But they would always be coming up with schemes of maybe the millions are here. And it's not. It's truly, the millions are truly in resting in the Lord. And so he's made sure that I haven't got any, any girlfriends that I talk to all the time or any boyfriends that I have to that I can chit chat with. No, 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 you don't. You have one boyfriend and he is called Jesus. And you chit chat with him. And he's it. You don't get to chit chat with anybody else. Um, and then every once in a while, you know, there's lunch with some friend and there's coffee with someone else. And suddenly my daughter says, comes home and says, Let's go to TJRF. What? Say, what? I'm worthy of that. I'm worthy of that. You know, and you have a weekend with Claudia, of course. That's always a joy because you need to have your own room. Oh, God, the clothes are all wonderful. And now you have a laptop, and maybe you have a connection. You can watch TV shows. In the room. You know, that you were looking forward to that, but and you didn't want to ask. Is this TV on? Which is stupid. Why did not I ask your husband if this TV on? What's what's? what's well, if you say no, I won't. We well, want to play some video games. Well, I might want to do that. So that was silly of me. But I'm growing learning, figuring out that if you don't ask, you don't get it. And if you ask and you're embarrassed, you're silly. Don't be embarrassed. I'm like, I don't want to ask anything like Lori said, I ain't going to get my feelings hurt. Well, you're silly. That'd be someone who's capable of having your feelings hurt. That's not their problem. That's your problem. And you missed out. Because they might have given you so much. You just said, so I love the Lord and I love where he's putting me Say, telling me things like rest reassuring me of rest it's like rest relax and here I was about to dive into Gloria's website get going with something and he said how about do nothing? I'm like, oh, at 1.59 p.m. on a Tuesday afternoon, <laughs> when I should have gone to the store. What? I got plenty of food now. Well, I should have taken a walk. What? Take a walk tomorrow. You know, because the real important thing is to sit here and enjoy the presence of the Lord and have fun with him just sitting there in this chair and talking to this webcam with his presence all around me and in me and he's looking at me just as much as i'm looking at you and it's adorable it's adorable to know him you know what i mean you just really think of how exciting it is to know that I'm seated in heavenly places right now. And that as I'm sitting here staring at this white light next to this webcam lens, that God is sitting right, here. sitting right here with me. God, the creator of the universe. He's rubbing his hands together. He's just waiting for that wonderful time when I'm going to have a chariot ride into heaven and walk around and see what's up. Maybe someone said, that's your mansion over there being built. Woo! Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's got 50 more years and heaven years for me to be 100 and I'm going to live to 120 and move on in. But I'm going to have heaven on earth. So I'm not going to be in a hurry like some people. I'm homesick for heaven, and I'm sure I will be. Not that I will go there and see it and have the same experience with everybody else, but I will be happy to be here.
here. And that's what I was just reading. Someone's um, prophet, prof, prophetic word today was something about, or maybe it was yesterday, Elijah List, uh, somebody's prophetic word and, and teaching was something about really enjoying the spot that you're in right now so that you don't try to leave. I don't know why the camera did that, but I think that's cute. Um, to enjoy the spot that you're in and not be so anxious to move on to the next thing. I think I wrote that myself in one of my blogs, now that I think about it. You know, not so anxious to move on to the next place, space that you're not enjoying where you are. That's why yesterday when I came in here, yesterday Monday, every time I change position, I'll transition back and forth my traveling. I get, you know, really tired sometimes or I have to get myself together and not get too overwhelmed or upset or like despondent. And watch that despondency because once that comes in, the devil is so mean. I'm going to turn this down. Are you still pictures? Nice. Because who knows? You may not have heard a word I said right now. I wonder how this will be when I have to um, do like a meeting thing. Will you do the meeting request thing? I wonder how that's going to be. But anyway, I had to, when I came in, I had to, you know, when I was going about work in the house, we have household things. I had to say to myself, Carol, it's okay with me, Carol, if I stay here for another year. I I I know that the one point two million dollars is coming into my hand. I have one point two million dollars. There are many people in the world that don't never dreamt that they will. I have that in my life supernaturally and spiritually in the spirit realm. It may not have appeared in my bank account and it may not be in my wallet. And it I may not see a sign of it physically, but God has told me, take the one point two million dollars that I have made and put it hold it. It's yours. And I did that it uh, last year. And I'm grateful for it. And I'm living my life as if he's already told me to start spending it. Because when God says, now spend it on that condo, it will appear and it will, it will be spendable. I'm preaching to myself. That's why he says, go get look for apartments. That's why he says, get that apartment book, showcase book. That's why he said, now the tarot says, hey, tell you the car, my life. let that be a moment when you need the car and go do the shopping, take whatever stuff, you know, you've got the car for food stamps or whatever, and then go and look at those apartment complexes that you want to look at. Go around and find these high-end apartment complexes. You're just going to have to do it. Yeah. And also, if it's a Monday, try to leave, leave Gloria, ask the Lord to help you. Leave Gloria's early and stop off at the condos downtown. It's not that you're going to move downtown Baltimore or you're going to move down the corner from Gloria and that's why you're going in there looking at them. You're going in there looking at them because the Holy Spirit of God told you to go look at them. And since you need a reason and you've been doing it now since 2008 or beyond, you can obviously see it's because you need to know what apartments, I don't know if I probably got the right word, that are going to be in the apartments, the condo you're going to get. What are the, what do the handles feel like? What, just like you had to go touch clothes at Neiman Marcus and Nordstrom's to see how they, and the Lord would say, touch that coach. That's how a purse feels. Touch that product pocketbook. That's how it should feel. Go in there to uh, the, the most high-end shoe store. Those shoes, that is the real feel of shoes you, my daughter, are going to wear. So, same thing with apartments. Go in and look at the hardwood floors. Is it light hardwood? dark hardwood that you prefer. Look at the dark hardwood. Look at how they look. Look at how, um, sh you know, the quality. You can see the quality of the wall walls here at Terry's place compared to the quality of the walls at Glorious. And then you can walk into Glorious apartment and then walk next door to the new place at 5500 and know the difference. And God wants you to look at even better places where they say 2400 a month. 3,000 a month. When they say 3,400 a month, 4,800 uh, 4, a month, 
Those are the places that ultimately, you see, God had to start you at Nordstrom because see, before he took you into Saks Fifth Avenue and, and Lunar Marcus, that's true, and before you went into some of these really high-end places, the same thing is going on with the condo, with where you're going to live, because you're speaking your money into existence, and you're speaking the condo into existence that he told you to rent for a year and rest there, okay? So you are going to look at condos one by one, little by little, that really are showing what you want. So, so that means you're going to look for, when you see, when I, when I was seeing 3400 I would go, 3400 oh no, Lord, we were going to go only as high as 2500 a month. No. Go for the 3400 because the favor of the Lord and the blessing of the Lord that's going to occur is going to involve something that was 4800 a month before. Therefore, that you'll be able to see the quality. Like Daddy would say, have many boyfriends because you need to be able to compare for your husband. You need to see a lot of condos. The car, you pretty much know. You know you're not the Benz. You haven't test driven a Bentley, but you know that's what you probably really will like. This condo, you're going to compare it along the way. $3,400, $4,800 a month, you tell them. That's not bad. Let's go see what that looks like. So that when it's time, you can pick who you want Which you, you'll be able to tell that's forty. That's a forty-eight hundred dollar a month apartment, and this is a twenty-four. Uh, so you compare a one bedroom for forty-eight hundred and a one bedroom for twenty-four eighty, and you're like, that's how a twenty-four eighty looks in a similar similar I don't say cosmopolitan kind of area uh McBanness or Chevy Chase uh Massachusetts Avenue okay that's what they look like downtown Baltimore since you go through there this is what they look like and you'll be able to compare this is the 2400 this is the 48 and you'll be able to see in the building where when you see a building that's like our highest is twenty four hundred, you're like, this is not the place for me. You start at twenty four hundred, this is not the place for me. I want where you start a one bedroom of forty eight hundred. And this is not the building. This is not that's why when you went down the street the poor child down the street, she was like, well, what were you looking to spend? I was like, uh oh. oh. If you're still caught with that, because she's talking about we've got we've got twelve hundred dollar apartments and we've got fifty hundred dollars. Like it was really exciting, and you're like, "Oh, the Lord tell me, twenty four hundred. Wait a minute, where am I? This is the wrong place." <laughs> you know what? You cannot be in a place that they're, they're all excited because something seventeen hundred dollars a month. You have to be in a place where the now the Lord is telling me as I'm, you know, giving this this teaching. You have to look for a place that's forty eight hundred a month for a one bedroom. And then, that was the best lighting right there. And then, you look at that and you compare. And then you keep looking at those. You look at 34, because really, you know, the, I hear this the Lord saying that even though he said, look for something, you're going to start looking for 25000 a month. That's what I can handle in 2009. By 2010, he was saying, look for... Okay, you go up because you, you have endured, you have persevered, and the devil has wrecked such havoc and tried to destroy you, and you keep on pushing through to such an extent that I'm up in the ante for you. You're asking for more, so I'm going to give you more. And so he said, okay, go to 34,000 34, a month. That's what you're looking for. Something 34, 35,000 a month. Now I realize God is not like setting stone. It's not like setting stone. But that's really, he, he could go to 64,000 a year. Well, no, it's 35,000 a year. He said, go to 34,000 a year. But now I'm realizing 35, 34, you know, because if you do $3,000 a month for rent, if you find a place of $3,000 a month for rent, and really what he was saying is they better include everything. So they want your money, they want to do it. And if it's forty eight hundred a month, tell them I want parking in there. I want everything. My condo fees included in there. It's only for a year. I don't have to stay here longer than that. 
I will even do a shorter term, but I'll do it one year. Uh, I'm in and out. You know, but when I come home, I want it to be a gorgeous, wonderful, luxurious, opulent place. And that's how I plan to decorate it. You know, so the Lord is saying, you look at 48... You look at forty. You look at a kitchen in a forty-eight hundred dollar apartment in a cosmopolitan area like Van Ness, Wisconsin Avenue, Connecticut, and so on. You look for that, and so then you have what you're going to compare, and you have what you're going to um, be looking for, so that because things are going to accelerate. It is, Carol. It is February eighth at 2 11 p.m. you don't have much time because the money is going to arrive and he's going to want you settled so that's why he's like look look at places and at the same time don't get stressed out just like the word came today um from um uh spirit of prophecy be afraid to take a break and relax and then it goes on to say your intensity in finding solutions to the problems you face will not even come close to the benefits of quiet rest that is your intensity in finding a solution to do this website you're ready to jump on Gloria's website try doing some more work with the Tunde the third Tunde book because this is not going to come close to the benefit of a quiet rest in my presence and trusting me to give you the necessary wisdom for breakthrough when you do sit down and I I knew this yesterday and I knew this today when I got up you sit down and you just sit with the Lord and you speak about the Lord and you talk about the Lord's blessings on your life and you talk about his magnificence and you talk about what he's teaching you and you 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 recount victories and it will be nothing for him to have you sit down at four five o'clock nine six o'clock maybe ten and do almost all glorious website within 30 minutes because the wisdom he's giving you will lead to the breakthrough and that includes every other thing you need including a condo you know maybe a condo that's right around here in Baltimore County which you're doing it like I can't believe there's anything like that around here but you may be surprised all of a sudden he'll give you some kind of wisdom to Google something and there it is you know so don't even neglect to rest and relax and then he goes on in spirit of prophecy to say this is not a time to tough it out in the strength of your own soul it is time to exercise resolute faith in my ability and willingness to bring you through every trial in victory says the Lord only believe and sure enough they talked about believing this morning on Andrew Woman and then Brady Matthews doesn't always talk as an eagle came forward today and said the glory about which I have been speaking is one of complete rest from religious exercise and I know that I feel as if I'm free from a lot of religious exercise but that the Lord is showing me you still got so much relig religiosity inside of you and I'm like he keeps showing me more and here he goes you will not be compelled does it sound like going to do the same for glory real quick or constrained by anything but my light at the core of your being. Not something. Nothing's going to compel you. Or you will you feel constrained by anything. You know? And oh my phone, me talking about let's do my web. I want to do a website. Are you? You know? No one. Even this thing with Gloria. I believe it's up to the Lord. I believe I'm supposed to do it, but I don't believe another thing is the thing to do. And I jumped onto Aunt Rain and she's not answering me. It's good because I don't think I'm supposed to do any other, another one. Then a Brady goes on, the Lord told him, Your one aim is to be yourself. Wow. Your one aim is to be yourself. Holy Spirit! As you have been perfected in the mind and heart of the Father absolutely free sons of God I'm a son come into my Sabbath glory it will not be a fruit of your labor in any way you can cut that out 
you know, don't even look for it to be a fruit of your labor in any way, my goodness gracious, the outward manifestation will be what grows of its own accord as the Christ light is illuminated in you and as you stand fast in liberty. You know what, that sounds like the word I got a while, a while ago, uh, this bit of prophecy that said, let your labors do your work for you. Now, you've worked, you've labored. What was it? You, 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 you held on in the wilderness. You held on to the death of your father. You held on to being the only one that would seem to be sad that he was gone. You held on into all nastiness of people saying, Oh, you're not following the Lord. You held on with people, Are you sure you're doing the right thing? Uh, you're not going to have a job? You know what I mean? You held on through everything through all innuendos and all people speaking about you, even behind your back, that they didn't mean to oops, let you know, but they let stuff slip. You held on, and God's going to keep you on. And because you held on, that labor, the la what's the labor? Faith. What's the labor? Believing. Because you held on, God is going to let that faith, that patience, do its full work. Hallelujah. And you're going to come out on top. You're going to come out uh, knowing that it's all been accomplished. Breakthrough? Your breakthrough's happening every day. You're seeing breakthrough when you're not crazy and it's 2.17 in the afternoon. On February 8th, a Tuesday, 2011. And you've been walking with the Lord without a salary since March 31st. Is 31 days in March? March 31st, 2008. You've been holding on. And let me tell you, it's a breakthrough every day that you kept becoming more. Not just that you're saying you're, you're more clear about what God has for you. You're more clear about the fact that he's going to bless you and the, what the, one of the blessings is going to be in terms of finances. You're positive. You're supposed to be writing more children's so. books. He wants, he, wants he wants you grounded, girl, Frank. He wants you grounded. He wants you settled. He wants you rooted so that when your man comes, here's what a little distraction could do. He wants you rooted so that when your man comes, he can be taking you out, wanting you and dining you and flying you all over the world to Paris for dinner and everything. That's cool and great and wonderful and marvelous, but you're going to have to get another Sunday book out. Up free for the kids to read. You're going to have to illustrate another one of your many stories that you've written so that the kids can enjoy it. So, yeah, it's going to be great. You can have one plus two million dollars. So, you getting the work done in the Lord told you to get? You better be. Because if you're not, only that done for Christ will last. I don't care if you have six hundred million dollars, which is also coming to you. It's going to be the wonderful work done. And what's that work going to reap? What is the seed that you're going to sell through the children's books and the children's stories and the wonderful pictures and the illustrations that you're putting out? What is going to be the crop? What did you ask for? One billion. I think I have to check my farmer's almanac. Whether it was one billion or one million souls of children born again, saved, relieving that Jesus Christ is God. And that he died for them on the cross. And ready to live their lives. That is not really about the sinner's prayer. It's about whether they really believe it. They really believe in God. They really believe that Jesus is his son. They believe that Jesus, that Jesus is the main thing. And that the Holy Spirit is available to tell them how to live their life. Every day through first grade, second grade, third grade. All the way to, to, to the to their old grandmas and grandpas themselves and that they want to live like that. I don't know how the Lord's going to do it for the children's story. I don't even need to ask him because he told me. 
He says, you write the books, you illustrate them, and I'll put my anointing in between the lines, and the children will be saved.